I really believe one of the biggest challenges in our world today is a lack of respect for one another. A lack of respect for human beings, a lack of respect regardless of race, regardless of education, regardless of what part of town you grew up in. And I think there's sufficient as evidence to prove it. Welcome to Leading Leaders Podcast. Five minute videos, five days a week. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast. And I, I placed right there in the screen, in the, in the write-up of this post, the definition according to Webster's of what respect is. And the, the first round of that definition says feelings of admiration for someone else's qualities, their attributes, or their accomplishments. Now, if, if you look at that and you say, well, I'm only going to respect somebody because they have a certain amount of money. Well, I guess under the category of admiration for their accomplishments or achievements, then that's adequate. And if you look at it and say, well, I'm only going to respect them because of the part of town that they live in or the kind of car that they drive in. And again, we're going back to their, their successes, their achievements or their accomplishments. But what about their attributes? Someone might admire, have a feeling of admi admiration for someone's ability to sing. Well, that's just an attribute. That's their natural talent mixed together with some skill and some effort. Then when you put all those things together, you have a wonderful talent that can be shown off on a regular basis. And we have vocalists all over the world of every walk, of every nature, of every skin color and culture. From operatic singers to Jack Johnson or Michael Buble to Tupac Shakur or Snoop Dogg, they're all artists. Charlie Daniels, they're all artists whose vocal quality, whose ability to tell a story through a song is admirable. And the feelings of admiration are for their singing. That may not mean that you agree with their life philosophies. It may not mean that you love and admire everything that there is about that person, but you can respect their talent for singing. I remember watching a little uh, clip. It's one of those, uh, I believe it was America's Got Talent or maybe it was American Idol. And the young girl comes out and she's very quiet. She's very, very shy. She's probably 13 or 14 years old. And when she starts to sing, she does hard to handle. Maybe you've seen it. It's been all over social media. But she goes from being this very quiet, mousy little someone to a lion on the stage, pacing back and forth with this deep vibrato of a voice. Powerful, powerful singer. And even Simon sat there with his mouth open going, where did she come from? Who is this person? And he told her, you came out very mousy, but you owned the stage like a lion. So you've got to have respect for her talent. She's 14. What does she know about the world? We're not talking about respecting her because she's old. We're not res talking about respecting her because of her massive achievements. We're not talking about respecting her because she's going to put her hand upside your head if you don't. That's not the kind of respect we're talking about. We're talking about respecting an attribute, a natural talent in her, her personhood, the who that she is. See, I think one of the challenges we have in the category of respect is that it has been brought down so far, the meaning of respect, that it has been twisted into something other than oh, the ability to respect or to give due acknowledgement of someone else's feelings, of, of their wishes, of their wants and their desires. That's a different kind of respect, but it's still respect. I, I watched an episode last night uh, called World's um, Most Wanted. And one of the episodes that I watched was about a guy by the name of Philistine Kabuga. Uh, he was a guy who owned a radio station and several businesses in a small country in Africa. And you might think, well, who cares? Unless you live in that small country in Africa, a small country called Rwanda. Now, many people who are alive today, because we have a very large generation of millennials, wouldn't remember 1994 at all. It was the year I got married. But it was the year that in Rwanda, this radio station did a phenomenal job using the power of the airwaves to generate hatred between two groups of people. Now, these are two groups of people who for decades have shared the same living space, intermingled cultures, intermingled relationships, 
both black-skinned people in Africa, both very dark-skinned people, both very similar features. They live in the same region of the world they have all of their lives. But somehow, based on tribal definitions, the radio waves, the owners of the station, the, those who had an ax to grind, so to speak, decided that one of those two groups of people was better than the other. And whether it was the shape of their nose or the size of their eyes or the shape of their eyebrows, they were able to distinguish one group from the other. The Hutu and the Tutsis. And because this gentleman Kabuga, uh, and this is all alleged, but, but there's a lot of documentation behind it for the America or for the world's most wanted episode. A lot of the documentation said he's the one who funded the unrest. He's the one who made sure that the conversation continued to flow through the radio airwaves. He was the one that made sure that business opportunities were squelched for one side and enhanced for the other. He's the one who purchased 48,000 machetes and dumped them on the streets so that when the lack of respect reached a fever pitch, when the hatred one group for the other reached a fevered pitch, it would be like playing dodgeball but only giving the ball to one side. Machetes and clubs, and they would do horrible things to each other. They would cut the Achilles tendon so that their victim couldn't run, and then they would chop them to death over a lack of respect. Let that settle for a minute because you're asking yourself the question, do you respect my position? Do you respect my place? Do you respect my home? Do you respect my person? Do you respect my spouse? Do you respect my relationship? And some of the challenges that we see even today in America have to do with the lack of respect for someone else's passions, someone else's desires, someone else's wants. And yes, there's a place where rights become privileges. And that's not a right anymore. It's a privilege. We've got to watch that line or we can very soon find ourselves in a division where there's really nothing to classify under other than what we've been poked at so long, like the Hutus and the Tutsis. I would say, even today, if you were to line up a thousand Hutus next to a thousand Tutsis without a deep conversation with them or asking them, what is your bloodline? What is your family heritage? What tribe did you belong to growing up? You wouldn't know the difference in their cultures today. You wouldn't know the difference in the way they look and the way they act and the way they talk and the way they think. They're just humans with their own quirks and their own personalities, but just humans. But because they were able to find a difference that they could poke at, there was enough division, enough lack of respect, enough hatred that 800,000 of them were murdered in the streets. The genocide of Rwanda, if you think I'm making this up, just look it up. The genocide of Rwanda, 1994. Almost a million people died at the hands of their neighbors. Not a military coup, not a world war. Almost a million people killed by their neighbors because someone was able to stoke the fire of hatred because they didn't have the core value of respect. My promise and my endeavor and my challenge to my own children, to my own household, to my own neighborhood, to my own community, to the people that I influence, respect one another. I don't care if you like the way they wear their hair or you don't. I don't care if you like the music they listen to or you don't. I don't care if you like the way they walk or talk or smell. I don't care. Respect the fact that that is another human being and that attribute alone is worthy of love. That attribute alone, human being, that's all they need to be respected in their person, in their thoughts, whether you agree with them or not, in their lifestyle, whether you agree with them or not. To respect that they are a human being is first and foremost. And if you can't start there, we will find ourselves as a city, as a county, as a state, as a nation, as a world 
in the same place as the Hutus and the Tutsis, fighting for life and death in the streets over an undefinable difference. Respect. A, a sincere feeling of admiration for someone else's attributes, achievements, or accomplishments. Make it a core value in your leadership. Make it a core value that you live, that you practice, that you teach, and that you influence in the lives of people around you. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast for Tell It Like It Is TV. Have a blessed day. Subscribe now for our extensive video library of leadership lessons promoting faith, family, and freedom.